Land speed records are great for headlines, and it's nice to know where the boundaries lie, but it's far more relevant to say how you get to that speed and how you, you utilize that power. Holy shit! For a questionably long period of time, conventional energy has fueled and dominated the vehicle world. But what if a new player, a challenger, emerged? What if electric could finally outrun gas? Hey, this is Toby from Motherboard. We're in Brooklyn, New York, about to go meet up with the minds behind Mission Motorcycles, the guys who have created the fastest and most advanced electric motorcycle on the market today. We're gonna to chat about electric motorcycles, electric vehicles, and see whether what they're up to is really a game changer. Electric motorcycles and electric bikes in general, not unlike electric cars, have had a history of starts and stops. Commercial electric cars have been around since 1909, and it, it's a phenomenal vehicle for 114 years ago. The Baker Electric Runabout, the last word. For bicycles and motorcycles, the compromises have just been simply too great. Range, speed, weight, and cost. And it's only in the last 10 years that a lot of those different parameters have gotten back in line so that it's possible to design and create a product that actually is something people are willing to buy at a price that they're willing to pay. Ten years ago, if you would have said, hey, I've got an electric car, that, that would have been cool. I, it wasn't really the case ten years ago. As we move towards this electric vehicle future, consumers have to embrace the good and the bad of the electric vehicles because there's a lot of really strong attractions about it, but there's also some downsides. We waited to bring this bike out when the time was right, when the, the products we could commercialize, produce at scale, were gonna be better than the state of the art of today. And so our motivating factor is to make the motorcycle industry better. We wanna make better motorcycles than there are today, full, full stop, that, that's what it's about. The argument is less, I don't think you can build it. The argument is more, I don't think you can build it in a way that I would wanna ride it. Motorcycles are all about performance, that's why we buy them. Um, an electric powertrain provides that far better than a, a gas engine. We have a 160 horsepower motor, which in and of itself is fairly unheard of. 120 foot-pounds of torque available instantly at the rear wheel, that's definitely unheard of. Our powertrain is a lot more reliable a lot simpler to build, believe it or not, a lot lower cost to build because we're only building smaller pieces of metal that, that fit together in simpler ways. A normal bike's drivetrain is complicated, with pistons spinning up to 14,000 RPMs and a transmission to transfer power. The Mission motorcycle is much simpler, with a battery-powered electric motor sending torque directly to the rear wheel. There's no clutching, there's no shifting, there's no chance of stalling the motor. You don't even have to start the motor. All you do is literally twist and go. One of the challenges that all motorcycle manufacturers face is how do we engage this next generation of motorcyclists? How do we create a, a lifestyle? It speaks to them, it resonates with them. The, the operating system we call it Mission OS and it's a primary way you interface with the bike. It's your standard gauge cluster but it has sort of anchors of functionality that you frankly should come to expect. Uh, we have, you know, turn-by-turn -turn navigations in Google Maps. We capture all your data, your throttle position, your lean angle, your speed, but also your location, time of day, and all these other things. And we overlay that on Google Maps so that you can analyze your rides in exquisite detail. What we need to do is create a solid foundation as we move forward and build the market, 
build the charging stations out there so people, as we move beyond the early adopters, new buyers, they won't be blocked by this range anxiety issue that you hear about. Tradition runs deep in the motorcycle world. To see how an old school gearhead responds to an all electric bike, we visit Works Engineering in Brooklyn, New York. So what do you ride on a day-to-day -day basis? I ride a 2000 Suzuki uh, SV650. It's cheap, it's reliable, and it's good for around town. If, for instance, one of these just landed in your lap, can you see adding it to the mix being something fun that you'd like to try out? I don't think so. It's just so easy to get gas like once a week or so and not have to worry about it and being able to go anywhere and charge. Right now in 2013, I don't see it really fitting into my life that well. So basically your concern would be essentially, it would be tricky to find an outlet somewhere. Yeah, right now. Yeah. And the time it takes to charge would just be a limiting factor. Well, with that in mind, uh, would you like to take it for a, uh, take it for a test drive? Uh, absolutely. The real culprit for the, the death of the electric cars in the 1990s was the battery. The batteries were still very expensive, they were still very bulky, but now finally in 2013 we are getting better batteries and they're going to continue to improve. Not having to shift gears in traffic like I was just riding in is super convenient. Having enough clientele coming through over the years, seeing like different folks come and getting their bikes fixed, can you see a market for it? Anything to make this a little bit more comfortable in the city and you've yeah. got a great, really good city bike. Well dude, thanks for, uh, thanks for your time and taking it for a test drive and hey, uh, your perspective. Really appreciate it. Our recharge times are pretty good. We've got an onboard charger that's a 10 kilowatt charger. That's the same as the highest end uh, commercial electric cars have. Um, that means you can charge in about an hour. Um, we also have technology built in the battery packs that allow us to charge them in about 10 minutes. We have things like range of 140 miles combined cycle on the highway, 230 mile range in the city, so that's as good or better than a gas tank. You're looking at about $1.50 to $1.80 per, per full charge, so per 140 miles of range. Significantly less than the trip to the gas station. It's about an order of magnitude less. The question of how we move forward requires a lot of players to be involved. On the policy side, you have federal policy, you have California policy, you have industry. You know, they're all trying to find their niche, they're trying to find a strategic approach. But in the end, it's all about consumers. We have to vote with our dollars. That's how electric vehicles are going to be successful in the end. When you're doing a paradigm shift in an industry, you're going to face hurdles in Washington, hurdles in the market. The more people that incrementally break those barriers down, it helps everybody. Really, electricity and hydrogen are the key. They've got to succeed. They truly can be zero emission. We can make them from renewable energy, no more fossil energy, don't have to require a lot of land. That's the future. I'm very hopeful we'll get there someday, I just hope it's not too late. After checking out and driving the electric superbike in the city and discussing potential urban limitations, we've headed three hours north of New York to put the Mission RS to the test. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us uh, who you are and where on earth we are right now? <laughs> We're in New York Safety Track. Right now, my name is Greg Lubinitsky. Have you had a chance to experience an electric motorcycle yet? Never. Never read about them, heard of them, but this is actually the first time that I'm actually seeing one and testing it in person too. 
Are you filled with excitement? Is it kind of like, are you an old school guy who's concerned about the emergence of something newfangled? No, no, man. It's all about progression nowadays. And this is something that, it's not only interesting, it's, it's the future. You have a lot more power delivery, a lot more torque, and it's instantly available. You don't have the torque curves that look like S-shapes or mountain hilltops, you have a flat torque curve. That means that no matter what speed you're at, be it a full standstill or, or very high speed, you have the exact same power available just at the twist of the throttle. You also don't need a transmission. So you're focused more on your ride quality and the ride experience than the overhead of controlling the vehicle. That throttle is pure power. I, unfortunately, it doesn't have wings. I wanted to take off on that thing. It's a very unique and exhilarating experience, and, and one that's frankly difficult for us to articulate. Uh, and so you, you see a lot of the reviews try to, to, try to explain what it really feels like. What it feels like is something that accelerates faster than anything you'll probably get a chance to ride in your lifetime. Ready to roll? Yeah. Alrighty. So after a couple days of shooting, um, learning about how this uh, bike drives in the city, and then seeing a bunch of pros who've been uh, riding their entire lives on tracks. I am now going to ride it at uh, what would be referred to as a leisurely pace. Hopefully not embarrass myself um, or test the limits of our insurance claims whatsoever. You have no concept of how fast you're going whatsoever. When you're moving, um, the bike disappears, the road disappears, and like it's, it's the closest I've ever felt to flying while still being connected to the ground. I think the e-bike industry in the next year is going to be a very exciting place. Ten years from now, you're going to see most new bikes being electric. We hope that what we're doing is paving the way for a lot of other people to do the same things we're doing, if not better. That's, that's better for everyone. <laughs>